each of you see as the main issues with either quantizing gravity or gravitizing the quantum, Eric Weinstein calls it geometrizing the quantum. Starting with Stefan, Professor Stefan Alexander, please. Um, well, there are, it depends on the perspective you take. Um, you know, general relativity, um, Einstein theory of general relativity is based on um, the principle of background dependence or diffeomorphism invariance that coordinate labels are fictitious. I mean, they are not physical, right? You can always define physics in a completely different coordinate system and the physics should be the same. And quantum mechanics, you know, in, in its formulation, at least um, in quantum field theory, the structure of quantum field theory, for example, you talk, talk about you know, unifying quantum mechanics with special relativity, um, you still are doing physics in some given frame and, you know, making sort of combining, there's a tension now, right? Because how do you define quantum mechanics in a background independent way? There have been attempts to do that. Um, happy to talk about those attempts. And, you know, they've seen some success, but um, there's also um, problems. Um, the main problem, of course, for me as a, just a, a physicist that pays a lot of attention to observations is that um, it's difficult to explain. Um, so some, some of these theories are said to be um, unphysical and I can get back to that about what that means, what unphysical means. Um, they're fraught with certain conceptual and technical problems, these um, background independent formulations of quantum gravity. And then you have things like string theory, which is a successful perturbative way of defining, of combining some aspects of general relativity with quantum mechanics. Um, but again, I have worked on string theory. I've worked on string theory mainly at the level of string phenomenology or string cosmology. And, you know, it, it provides a good toolbox, but also string theory itself has its own um, issues and un, unresolved problems. And that's why it's still an active field of research. So that's my little summary about um, why quantum gravity is so hard to... So we, we currently don't have a consensus in terms of the um, you know physicists. We don't have a consensus about a theory of quantum gravity. So if we don't have a consensus, then we don't really have a theory of quantum gravity. Actually, uh, Professor Alexander, I agree with every every syllable you've added. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, think of it possibly, possibly, uh, just to add a little, maybe from ignorance or lack of knowledge uh, uh, deep within physical theory, but what if it's not just about quantizing the gravitational field or geometrizing the quantum as Dr. Weinstein, Eric Weinstein says, what if it's about something else as well? What if there is a super force, a force of unification that somehow combines all four forces given that uh, the force of gravity is acceptable as a force and not just a space-time curvature and so forth. And this super force could be, for example, Isaac Newton. Let's go back to way before, all right, circa 1693 AD. Thank goodness for that. Uh, 1693, he writes a letter to one of his buddies, R Richard Bart, I think Sir Richard Bentley. He says, what if gravity is the result of an agent, big A, capital A, that acts constantly throughout the universe in accordance to given laws of nature. And my question is, what if this agent, capital A, is the super force? Now, Professor Abai Ashtakar, which by, by the way, I think quantum bounds should be called Ashtakar bounds in the, in the LQG in loop quantum gravity. Um, and I think it, he's got something, and we have to discuss this, this whole idea of the Ashtakar bounds, the quantum bounds. Uh, 
because there may be some sort of uh, super force, super density resulting in a super bang. I know, I know. You see what happens when you agree to a conversation with a... So let me interject if you don't mind. I want to frame this conversation. I know that I've said this to both of you. Stefan Alexander is a professor of theoretical physics at Brown University and holds many accolades. And I'll list those in the actual intro itself. And Salvatore Pius is an engineer working at the Navy slash U.S. Space Force slash I know that you can't say exactly what your position is. But the point is that rarely do those in the academic circles listen to those who are outside of it, and especially when those who are on the outside feel like they have some grand idea, because you generally get pitched them left, right, and center when you're an academic. And so it's difficult to separate the wheat from the chaff. With Stefan, what I like about you is that you take your cues from physics from jazz, which is that if someone throws you an idea, you play with it and you throw it back to the person. You mentioned that this is how you work with your mm -hmm. graduate students. Mm -hmm. So this is supposed to be, or this is, this whole conversation is an example of what would ordinarily happen behind closed doors being brought to the public. And so hopefully it's something that researchers can aspire to. So that's what frames this conversation. This, gotcha. yeah. this respect that is seldom shown and compassion yeah. between, let's say, academia and those who are outside when they have large ideas, grand ideas, grand unification. Right. So on that note, on that note, so let me um, ask, um, let me respond to Sal. Um, sure. That's great. So first of all, Sal, uh, please call me Stefan. Um, oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate okay. it. Yeah. And um, so, so I'm going to push back a little bit. I'm going to say, well, you, you for push, I'm going to push back and agree with you. The first thing I'm going to agree with is that your idea of, let's say the super force, meaning that Unif that quantization of gravity can only happen with a unification scheme, where basically there's some force, let's call it your super force, so some force, or something that underlies all the force of gravity, right? And the forces that quantum mechanics actually, you know, um, unifies itself. So quantum field theory was an example of um, a way of unifying the three interactions, the three, um, you know, the weak interaction, the strong interaction, and the electromagnetic interaction, at least, I mean, quantum field theory is a language at least, okay, um, you know, quantum field theory and gauge invariance, right, is a language, right, or the technology, the conceptual mathematical technology that underlies those three forces, right, and the super force, you know, the, this unification of gravity with these other three forces. Th this was actually the program of string theory, right? String theory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and its its parent, you know, when pe some people call, call, I think I find this, its parent theory actually very interesting, matrix theory, right? The idea that, you know, what even underlies, what that underlines the overarching framework that um, that string theory comes from is a matrix um, quantum mechanics. So now I think what is interesting about what you're saying is that there's one thing to say that forces, including gravity are unified, but your perspective, what I'm hearing, your perspective is that you, you're calling that unification a super force. And therefore I'm gonna ask you, what is that force? You just watched a clip from the Theories of Everything channel. For the full video and all its magnificence, then click here. And if you'd like to see more, then subscribe. Enjoy.